Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. So today we're going to continue on with our Class A amplifier project. This board's, I don't know, it's three quarters of the way done at this point, I think. All right, guys, so when you're building a board, let me just say, now, first of all, this guy's nice to have. Something to hold it up off the bench when you're soldering. Sometimes putting standoffs on the board is a nice way. You put standoffs on both sides so you can flip it over and it's not laying on the parts. But this is a pretty inexpensive gadget. I'll put the link below. And this thing slides back and forth. This board's too long for it to go a long way, so I had to do it this way, which actually worked out pretty nice. There's a strategy in putting your parts down and soldering, and usually what it is is you take the parts that are going to be the hardest ones to get to later and solder them first. Often it's the small profile parts, like resistors, like all these little resistors, the little diodes, it's just small parts. So often it's small parts to big parts. But not always. It's the parts that are going to be the hardest to get to. Sometimes you have a big part. The once you put all the parts around it, the other little parts, you can't get to the big parts leads. The leads might be kind of tucked in and hard to get to. So just some considerations. So I'm, I'm going to bring the camera over and kind of show you the, the method I used and some of my thought processes, why I did what I did. But in general, you might be able to see from there even, I don't know. But uh, you'll see that the resistors are sitting pretty high off the board. And I did that obviously so they don't heat the board. But I also did them high enough that there's room for air to move underneath them and around them. So also to help the resistor itself not see a hot spot underneath it and be able to you know radiate heat all directions. So now where I have a cluster of them over here, we'll talk about that. Now the capacitors I haven't soldered down yet. And one thing about those capacitors I want to just tell you, they have a, it's like a polyester or mylar plastic sock over the metal can. That metal can is tied to the negative lead of the capacitor. So you can ohm that just to check for yourself. You know, they put that on there. It serves a purpose obviously to show you the, the stripe for the negative lead. Also to show you the value and all that stuff, you know, but you know, one of the main purposes is for isolation or dielectric protection when you have caps close to each other and they're touching and they're not the same potential, the negative leg, you don't want them shorting together, okay? You know, even though I've tried to be careful in the past, I always try to be careful when I'm soldering, of course, but when I'm soldering something, you're soldering over here somewhere, you may not be focused on that long tip, you know, back here, hitting a cap until you touch it. You go, oh, did I just do that? Yep, I sure did. And you, you burnt a little mark in the polyester or whatever it is. And then it looks like crap. If they're next to the part, it could be a dielectric issue. But in a case like this where they're not next to each other, it just doesn't look good. And we want our boards to look good, right? So it's good to put those on after you've put on most of your parts, I think. Now the FETs, there's three FETs that's in the middle of the board. I could just drop them down and solder, which I was tempted to do. But then I, I wanted to look at the heat sink to see if I need to have them posted up off the board a little bit. You know, the leads kind of go skinny and then they kind of flare out. And where they flare out and they hit the board, I think they call that the meniscus. And if you just drop them down like that, you might find that they don't fit the heat sink as well. So I want to make sure the, uh, I want to find a heat sink. It didn't say to put them on a heat sink, but I think I probably should since they're power devices, right? So I'm going to look for a heat sink and consider that before I put them on the board. Now the big FETs here, let me show you something. The big FETs, they put them along the edge, so I think the idea was so they sit next to the heat sink. You mount the board next to the heat sink. Well, if I do that, I think there's a little bit, I don't know if the legs, I think the legs need to be bent so they come away and then go up. So I think I'm going to leave, leave them a little bit longer so I can bend them. So there's a little bendability there. <laughs> that makes sense. All right, guys, let's bring the camera over, take a look at this board, kind of see the progress I've made. And I'll talk about it a little bit. And if you guys want to see me show a different you know, progression of this board. One thing is we're going to find out the right parts on this board and then 
I won't have to make modifications to this one. I can solder them on cleanly. And the other thing is, if you guys want to see a different progression, like you want to see soldering and that kind of thing, let me know. If you want me to fast forward through the soldering just so you can see it being built, let me know that too. Otherwise, on this board, I'm just kind of showing you steps of the progression, okay? So, Okay, so what I've found out is I've got heat sinks on these three FETs in the middle. I'm going to show you how uh, to properly apply the uh, thermal compound okay, on the heat sink. At least how I'm doing it, okay, and the way I think it should be done. And uh, then I'm going to, I'm waiting for the heat sink to come in to put the big FETs on. So I'm just going to show you today the progress I've made, okay? So sorry about that. No testing. We won't get that far today, but it'll be a little shorter video, I guess. And All right. Let's bring the camera over and take a look. Okay. Uh, so here's the board. I've got parts actually soldered in. I don't have this big fat soldered in. I wanted to wait to get the heat sink so I know how high. But I've got these three guys soldered in. I've got them on these heat sinks here. And I left that little stub so it stands up off the board. Uh, and I thought just to let air circulate around that and so that the heat sinks don't heat up the board. And you know, I just thought, yeah, I'd get more air around them. So the other thing you might notice is this arrangement I have here. I'll move this over here. I'm gonna zoom in on this. So you notice this arrangement on these resistors? So, uh, I have one ohm resistors and I needed 0.47, so I have 0.5, so I'm slightly above what they wanted, but, you know, there's four sets of them, so it's pretty darn low resistance. But, so I have two one ohms in parallel, and I mounted them, here, let me pop this out of here. So you can see how I mounted them. The bottom one's off the board, and the top one's not touching the, bo the bottom one. So, and the side-by-side -side pairs are separated a little bit. So that's how I did it. That's what the rest of the board looks like. There's that nice gold capacitor. And there's another one, and here's a little shorter one. This is just a, for the power supply, or... Yeah, this is just for the current source, the DC coupling. And yeah, so I still have to solder on the film caps or the ceramics. I was trying to decide what caps to put on there. So I'm going to decide on that and I'll put the transistors on and mount this to a heat sink so we can power it up, okay? But that's what it looks like. Bottom side, I trimmed off the leads finally. And might be able to see this mess I left down here of all these little all these clippings here yeah you see all these clippings I left behind as I cut them off I'll save some of these I'll put them in a little bucket and I, I like to save these ice cream canisters actually to put parts in I got heat sink parts in here so it makes a nice little clear plastic container to hold things but these things sometimes are nice for jumper leads. Okay, this guy right here is the thermal compound that I applied to these heat sinks. And I just wanted to walk you through that to show you how I do that, okay? All right, guys. So here, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, I've got the screw and that little isolator thing that's on there, that little washer, and the gap pad, the transistor, and the heat sink. And this little gap pad goes between the transistor and the heat sink to help get the thermal interface so that there's no gap or anything between the transistor and that but also to isolate it electrically and that's what this guy is used for too but in this case I'm not going to use either one of those two things because those heat sinks are not going to be touching anything and they're spaced apart and so I want the best thermal conductivity as I can so I'm not going to use that isolator this little guy right here and I'm not going to use that gap pad I'm just going to put I want this metal to metal as good as I can okay now 
when you do that, some people say apply thermal paste liberally. That's a no-no. Don't do that. Thermal paste does not is not a better conductor than metal. And another thing is you get it everywhere. Even when you're trying to be careful, it just happens to get everywhere. When you apply it, you put just a little dab on here. And it's always going to come out liberally. A lot more than what you need. Okay, now what you do is you take this little spatula that came with this guy and you put it down here on the plastic, on the metal, anything that's going to come into contact with that heat sink. Now first I apply it so it touches, it gets everywhere, so that's pretty liberal. And then I take this the, the squeegee and I kind of try to squeegee it off so it's just a thin layer. Okay, just a thin layer. So some people feel like, oh, the more the better. That's that's not true. Uh, no matter how good this stuff is, it's still a resistance, a thermal resistance between the two metal pieces. Like when you put two metal pieces together, there's not a perfect interface. Even if you buff it and shine it, there's going to be, if you look real close, there's a porous, there's a little porous to the metal. And all this compounds uh, meant to do fill in those gaps in that porous uh, connection okay so then you put the screw down in here and you go ahead and screw that down nice and tight and you want and then you hold the leads now I've put a, a gap you know something like a screwdriver in between the transistor and the heat sink to hold it straight but I find just putting your fingers there when you tighten it it wants to twist the transistor underneath your you know fingers if you don't hold it so I just hold it try to keep it straight sometimes I have to do it a couple times but and then I try to get it nice and tight okay so now there's not a lot of thermal compound between my heat sink and transistor just enough to fill in those voids and probably still plenty or more than I need all right, guys, so, hey, I, I hope that gave you an idea how at least I put together a board, and I was hoping to get the, the, the big heat sink in, and it might be a little while, actually. I'm kind of afraid of that. I've got a bunch of other heat sinks around here, and I thought I'd have something that would fit, but I just don't quite have something that long and something big enough to dissipate the heat we're going to. So I don't really want to burn, them up, burn up the fits, you know, uh, because... Even at idle, this thing's going to get hot. It's not like a, a different class of amplifier that runs more efficiently that I can run at a lower power and not heat up. So, sorry about that. But, hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks, Patreons, for all your support and everybody for watching the videos. And, hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks.